Hey guys, what's up? My name is Felipe with Bigger Pockets. We just found another rental property with an open concept, open basement, and two car garage. Now, before we get in there and look at it, hit the subscribe button, the like button, and leave us a comment and let us know what more you want to see. Let's go inside. Awesome guys, so we walked in, and as soon as you walk in, you get this really nice, welcome back to grandma's house type of feeling. And I like that because it's a comfortable feeling to have for your tenants as well. You always do that. You start wanting to get a feel of the house and knowing what your tenants are gonna do. Now, when you first walk in, you got the living room. It's a big open area, and that's nice, but I really like this kitchen. It's very open. Uh, you know, it's gonna be suitable for two or three people walking around or maybe even a table, right? And they're gonna be able to cook around each other. So that's perfect. This little island right here would be a great little setup to put down their food and eat amongst each other. So that's great. This kitchen is open, it's big. The appliances are not old, which means that the light bill is not gonna be high, right? So we love that as well. You get great counter space and some pretty decent lighting. Over to my left, you got an open patio where people can just walk out and maybe have a little cookout. I love this kitchen. All right, nothing really special here. Three bedrooms, one bathroom, and everyone gets to share it. Now, typically a renter's is not gonna like that, but the way we rent it, this is perfect. We typically rent to one gentleman per room, tops two, and they know they share the bathroom. It usually takes about one month to get that together. Some guys will shower in the morning, some guys will shower after work. It ends up working out just fine. And people like being able to have consistency. So this creates consistency where every room is the same and no one's fighting over who gets what in what bathroom or what room, right? You got 12 by 12 rooms and everyone shares a bathroom. It's great for our tenants. All right guys, spoke way too soon. This is not a closet. This is actually a half bath. That's awesome. Someone's gonna pay an extra $50 to have this room to have the private half bath in their, in their room. That's great. All right, so this is a great space. It's huge in here. This is easy, 15 by 20 or 25. It's got a private entrance, a closet already made. All I gotta do is add a bathroom in this area and I'm set, right? My thought process, right, just right off the top of my head, blow that out, create a bathroom. I'm almost sure that there's plumbing on the other side. We'll figure that out in a minute but I could add a bathroom there, maybe a small kitchen area here, and this is a private loft. It's got a private entrance, two windows, tons of lighting. I love this space already. Easy, a six to $700 rent. Oh guys, this area is perfect. And just like I thought, plumbing, this is great. It goes right through the wall and I can create the bathroom over there. This big area is perfect for some rooms, maybe more cash flow. So it guarantees to cash flow already the house but this is potential for just more cash flow on top of that. We can maybe add two bedrooms, close that off, add some windows. This area would do great in the future if we decided to take that route. My guess, $700 in cash flow. So this property really reminds me of another one I have. And as an investor, that's really important to flex that muscle memory, if you will, where you get that gut feeling of this is going to work. I have another property that's exactly like it, and I'm not trying to do anything fancy. If I can cash flow over a thousand there, I can cash flow a thousand here, right? This property, when you first walk in, it has a really cozy back to grandma house style feeling. It's got tons of potential for cash flow already, plus that really big garage area for extra cash flow in the future if we decide to. Remember that hidden bathroom? I think this property is gonna have a ton of hidden cash flow. I love it. Let's go back to the office, let's run the numbers and make sure that it's gonna work. Let's go. All right, guys, we made it. Let's jump into the numbers and find out if this property is going to work or not. I have a really good feeling about this one, especially after the downstairs, right? Big open areas, garages galore. It's gonna be great. I think this property is gonna work. Now we just gotta see if the price gets accepted. Let's jump into the numbers and see what we got. All right, 4935 Barella Drive in Antioch, Tennessee. Asking price was 200,000. Market value was 201,750. Automatically giving me equity the moment I close. I love that. So we're gonna offer 190. That's gonna give me about $10,000 more in equity. And typically I like to use that as my starting point for my build, right? So if I have 10,000 in equity, guarantee that I can use 10,000 to start building. We don't know the purchase price, closing cost, or if they're going to accept it yet, so I don't have those numbers. 
Hypothetically, if they accept our offer of 190, this is what the numbers would look like. 20% down payment, 38, $152,000 loan, right? So that's how much we gotta bring to the table. Our total monthly payment would be 937. The monthly taxes would be 107. The monthly insurance would be $60, right? So all together, we would pay 937 a month, which is great, it's not even a thousand bucks, and the upstairs is gonna cover that completely. We are going to lease the upstairs for 1350. Remember, there was three bedrooms, each one at 450 gives us a total of $1,350. The utilities typically is gonna come around 400 bucks for the whole house once we add the bedrooms downstairs. It's a little high, but that's okay. I think with the cash that we're coming in, uh, we'd be able to cover that. The cash flow is going to be 1150 bucks after the utilities. Now the utilities takes care of the whole house. So we're still gonna be cash flowing pretty well as long as these numbers hold. Now the downstairs is gonna be the make it or break it part, right? Our cash flow is 1150. Our capital expenses comes out to about 412. That's what we're gonna keep in reserve in the bank to make sure we can cover things. And then a monthly cash reserve of $100. We are gonna total cash flow 1,000 bucks from this property. The downstairs lease is gonna be the make it or break it. Remember, we're gonna add two bedrooms, two bathrooms as well. In that big loft area, we can easily get six to $700 for that. It's really just gonna depend on how big I can get that bathroom. Now, the other side where the two garages are, we're gonna block that off. We're gonna add, a, we're gonna add two windows and a door. And we're gonna have two rooms and a bathroom and a kitchen. That area should rent for about a thousand bucks, if not 1200. The cash flow is gonna be great. I already see over a thousand dollars. This is very kind of kind of hesitating, but I think with the two bedrooms added, if I can get 1300, the cash flow would be a little bit more like 1200 bucks on this property. Regardless, over a thousand dollars. If I can build it downstairs for 10 grand, which is gonna be um, you know, right around what I think we'll spend, it's gonna be a great property. At the end of the day though, we have to get it for that 190. If we, if we don't get that offer accepted, we might be able to bring it up a little bit, but at least that starts the conversation. Do not be scared to offer under market. As long as they don't just dispute your offer, then you still got a chance at getting that property. Don't be scared to make low ball offers. And those are the numbers. Let's see what happens. All right guys, make sure you hit the subscribe button hit the like button, and if you have any questions or comments, put them below, and we'll make sure to get to those. All right, guys, you have a good rest of your day.